Hello, okay. everybody. This is Martin Petella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. And today I have with me Jorge Urena, or George Urena, as the Canadians would call it. And uh, he comes to us via a company called Yutko. And Jorge is a phenomenal fellow. He knows so much about Peruvian agriculture and especially about the crops that we can get from Peru that are so unique and so powerful and to be found nowhere else. Jorge. Hello, Martin. Thank you so much. Uh, well, glad to be here with you and uh, share all this information uh, on the Peruvian products to your customers, uh, which, uh, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's very important to know, uh, educate uh, our, our consumers on these products because they're basically different than anybody else's. Uh, that's, that's what thrills the me market. the most. When I first yeah. met you, I remember learning about the uh, black and the purple macas and then, mm -hmm. then finally getting the concentrate. And it was just, mm, I only understood or knew the old ordinary maca. I, right. I had used it before. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it's like, well, well whatever, maca. <laughs> and right. then I finally got your product and I says, oh, now I understand. Right, <laughs> is a significant difference. I would like to have you explain it in your way to. Okay, so yeah, and it gets to the point where uh, many people, for example, uh, go to the store and they buy a uh, a maca product, and uh, you know they feel nothing. They there's no effect. Uh, all the benefits that they're supposed to happen never happen. And uh, obviously, there's a reason behind, and I, I would like to explain your customers. I mean, all about maca, okay. In in a summary uh, way, obviously, we can't extend too long, but uh, I'll explain. Maca, what is maca? Maca is a root grows in Peru at fourteen thousand feet altitude. It grows in the region of Junín. This is where uh, initially and originally uh, this uh, root developed. Uh, evolve for thousands of years, okay, to what we have right now. And the uh, maca uh, wasn't farmed until 1998. Uh, we were the first ones uh, farming maca in Peru. Uh, then after the, uh, the activity started to grow, and I don't know if you remember, but probably back in uh, the 2000s, 2003 or four. I mean, maca was very, I mean, little in the market, uh, was uh, a new player, a new ingredient. And there were only a few brands in the market, including us, which we uh, uh, launched in Canada uh, and the United States back in 2003, at the end of 2003. So um, I would like to show your customers first uh, what, uh, how the maca looks like. Okay, like the real deal. So I think uh, right now what we're gonna do is just uh, show uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of everything. Okay, and well, okay. So I hope you can uh, you can see that. Okay, we have a, a nice black maca, a purple maca uh, root. Okay, which are the two main ingredients on one of our products. Uh, we have also a yellow maca. Uh, actually, here's the, uh, that's the yellow maca, which it's probably very close to it, okay? Uh, it doesn't look that much similar, but uh, it's, uh, here the, we have the three colors, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in fact, we have 11 colors in total. And we can actually summarize three main colors, yellow, purple, red, and black, okay? Being the red and the uh, black uh, maca, the main ones. The yellow maca is probably the, uh, the most common variety. Uh, it's still maca, but uh, it just uh, uh, gives you nutrients, not so much the benefits we know, uh, I mean, maca can give you. Okay, so when we manufacture a product, we have two sources of raw materials, okay? Uh, one is the fresh maca root, and the other is the dry maca root. And what I showed before was the dried maca root. And there's two set of benefits uh, that you can 
uh, uh, highlight on, on the two raw materials. So, and this is very important. The fresh maca root uh, smells and tastes like a uh, horse radish, okay? It's spicy, okay? Uh, it's not uh, that pleasant to the taste, okay? Per se, it's spicy, okay? But it tastes like a radish, okay? More or less. Now, all you can do with this product, okay? You can dry it up, you can mill it and get a powder, but what's gonna happen is this product is not gonna give you any benefit except nutrition, and that's it. So you're gonna get nutrients, okay? Now, why the dry root will give you all these other benefits? And what I'm talking about is uh, hormonal balance, energy, and well-being. In, in just uh, as a summary, okay, there's many more, plenty of benefits. Well, there's uh, endurance, there's vigor, stamina, uh, potency, energy overall. So there's many ben benefits you can get out of maca, but these benefits are only coming from the dry roots. Now, why? Okay, when the maca root is harvested, okay, as I mentioned before, you have two different ways of uh, doing, I mean, a powder, raw material. Now, the, uh, the dry maca root is actually not just dry, something that you put in an oven and then get it dry. So you have to put it in the sunlight uh, at high altitude over you know, a certain period of time, usually six to nine months, okay? And uh, the maca root will uh, get uh, condensates. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really dry in a way, it transforms, it gets, you, you, you're gonna get something different. We don't know, we don't understand really what happens, okay? But all these um, uh, previous uh, aromas or flavors uh, of the original maca root, okay, are gone. And now we have a sweeter product, okay? Because it's actually sweet. And behind that, there's what we call glucosinolates. And this is just a, a chemical compound, biochemical compound found on the maca. You will uh, get uh, alkaloids. Uh, you will get uh, different aspects, okay, that they're not present on the uh, fresh root. So that's, a, uh, that's the first uh, thing you need to notice. So for example, if any of your customers, okay, uh, uh, goes to a store and they buy a product, let's say black maca powder or red maca, because there's some, some uh, manufacturers, they have this divided, right? Uh, but I mean, something weird. I mean, you will see these products, okay? They're almost the same in the package. So they're all, I mean, the same color and usually the taste and the, the, the aroma will be spicy, like a radish. So that means the product has been done with uh, the fresh raw material, the, uh, the, the fresh maca root, and you're not gonna get any of the other benefits that we mentioned on the dry root. So that's very important to know, okay? So the organoleptic uh, aspects are important to recognize a good quality maca to begin with, okay? Dry or fresh, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, now we're gonna step into the colors of the maca. What's the main difference? Because once it's dried and we know the benefits we're gonna get out of maca, we have a difference between the colors. Uh, there's a different uh, nutritional profile on each product and each product will deliver different benefits as well. So for instance, <clears throat> the uh, yellow maca I mentioned was the most common variety. Uh, you will find abundance of, uh, of this uh, raw material, but the, the darker roots, the, the black and the red maca roots are the most important ones among the three. So the uh, purple maca, for example, uh, purple maca will give you uh, healing, soothing, repairing, relaxing. Uh, it is a product that will give you energy, but in a different way. It is more gradual. It's not impacting. The black maca, by the contrary, is just like having a cup of uh, espresso. Uh, it's just a, a bo uh, energy booster. It will give you uh, instant uh, motion, energy, uh, stamina, vigor, uh, endurance, you name it. So you feel really good. It now, sounds more like the testosterone type of impact, uh, right? Correct. Uh, but not everybody wants energy right, right. Uh, I mean, suddenly to happen in your system. Okay. Some people 
may have a uh, hormonal uh, imbalance situation. For instance, they have uh, too much cortisol due to stress, for example. Okay, very common right now. Nowadays, uh, it's yep. just, uh, you know. Uh, I agree. It's cortisol happening. is a big problem for a lot of people. Exactly. And so for, if that's the case, okay, I won't recommend you to have the black maca. Okay, not that it's going to distort, okay, your hormonal uh, system, but the most recommended product will be the purple because the purple actually, okay, uh, calms you down, makes you feel relaxed, okay? And you will get the energy, but in a different way, gradually, once your system is now in, in, in balance. And that's the whole point, okay? So each product is different. Now, I can tell you something, uh, uh, Martin. Uh, in the market, we have a preference. So we know for a fact that many, many women love the purple maca. Okay. Why? Because it actually works very well for them. Okay. You know, men and women were different and women, uh, like, uh, likes to be very calm, you know, relaxed, soothe, you name it. Men, we like strong stuff okay so i will put it as an example when i do my presentations to many people okay we go to a you know a coffee shop and we're gonna get uh for example if i'm with my wife i will get probably a double espresso okay and my wife will get a cappuccino so something milder you know it's not as strong so it's that's more or less the same idea and uh, my recommendation is just basically go with uh, uh i mean with the uh, rule of thumb, okay? Black maca increases your energy levels, I mean, a lot. The other one will give you energy, but differently. And it will make you feel relaxed and calm, which many people uh, like. Very good. Okay. Any so, questions so far? Well, yeah, it's awesome. So to set you apart from the rest of the marketplace, uh -huh. I remember that you did a lot of support for the local farmers in peru you also yes. you also had to deal with this market collapse that the chinese people caused a while back Oof. all of that yeah right yeah that was that was way back uh, maybe about five years uh, five years ago okay but uh, it's happening again actually oh is it have, have yeah. they come back again uh yes because and I'm going to tell the story very quickly. Uh, what happened is just uh, a few years back, uh, I was actually in China, okay? Uh, I was uh, there for a, uh, you know, a trade mission. And uh, we, uh, we were looking for supplier, sorry, customers of uh, Maca in China. We found somebody that was dealing with Maca in China, in Shanghai. And uh, we had a meeting with this guy. So he, it was surprising to us that these guys had have been growing maca for a long time. I mean, maybe a couple of years. And they had even more hectares grown uh, with maca uh, than us in Peru, which <laughs> was really weird. Okay, so then we, uh, we end up finding that these guys were, I mean, got the seeds from Peru. They started growing maca at a very low altitude, different, uh, different habitat completely. And, uh, well, they were getting maca, but let me show you what they were getting, okay? And uh, just going to show you a few a few items here, okay? Uh, okay. So let me see if this is uh, this is. I can see it. These are shriveled, tiny little things. Uh, yes, and that is uh, let's say the black, the uh, purple, and the yellow maca. Okay. Mm. Now. I'm uh, just going to take this away and, uh, and and tell you. So what happened here? Okay, this is uh, this is actually this is weird. Uh, when they took the maca root uh, to China, the maca root, I would say, there's some sort of uh, intelligence uh, or something going on. Went back in time. So you see, when maca started growing uh, uh, in Peru. They, we used to have, and, and we know this because we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, records of it, okay? We found the what we call the maca carrot, okay? And the maca carrot, okay, it is 
uh, I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. Okay, something very elongated. I don't know if you can notice that. Yeah, okay, well. so if if we were to uh, put this in perspective, okay, uh, okay, so this little macro root, okay, that I showed you just a minute, a few minutes ago, right. it's actually something like this. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's, it's actually bigger, but when it dried, and I, actually this was dried in an oven, this wasn't dried naturally, because it's so humid down in uh, in China that they couldn't achieve a dry product and transform like the one in Peru. So these guys were actually losing money. Not only that, okay, the products were useless because I mean they found they have no benefits out of this product. So this became just like a, any regular root or vegetable if you want, okay, but useless, okay, with no benefits. Now, uh, and I think I have another one here, which actually, uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can, you can, well, I'm gonna show you this. You see my point? Yes, exactly. Okay, so this is what we called uh, in the past the, uh, the carrot uh, maca. Anyways, so maca evolved over time to to become what what we have right now. Okay, so something like this. Okay, yeah, and nice. And, and I would and I would put it in perspective. Okay, the maca root is actually something like this. In, when it in grows, life, when it grows, when it's fresh. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, based on that, okay. The Chinese were uh, really desperate to get the product because they started this whole uh, industry that they wanted. Okay, well, there, the demand had, is there, right? Well, the demand is there for sure. So uh, they even uh, copy, okay, our Peruvian uh, customs, meaning that the Aboriginal people in Peru, okay, so the Chinese actually copy the, uh, their dresses, their uh, everything, and they try to copy saying that the maca root was originally from China, not from Peru, that the Peruvians got the maca from China. Okay? <laughs> so it was, a, I mean, a, a, a problematic uh, issue. And not only that, okay, the Chinese actually were desperate trying to get the product, trying to comply with the business. And what they did is they went to Peru and they started paying a lot of money for the maca roots, especially the black, because the black is is the rare. Um, right. rarest, uh, well, uh, and in Chinese culture, the male force somehow, they are really obsessed with the uh, darker, the male energy, right? Correct. Yeah. So what happened is uh, many people in Peru thought, okay, well, the, the uh, Chinese are paying a lot of money for, for the maca roots. Let's grow maca. And Hunin is a protected area, okay? So it's like a conservation area. And uh, the people are allowed to grow the maca on the hills. Uh, so it's just, uh, it, it is a limited extension of land. It's big, but it's, it's limited anyways. So what happened is they went some other to some other places in Peru. So other provinces, other areas, which didn't have the same habitat, the same uh, uh, altitude, I mean, it was a completely different story. And what happened is the maca root started growing and uh, they got uh, something like this. I'm going to show you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's still, this is maca from Peru, but it wasn't there. Okay. It wasn't the right, uh, the right thing. Now, people were losing money again because the size was too, too small. Okay, so you are not getting the right uh, yield, I mean, to manufacture the products and get to the right price. So they, somebody brilliant started uh, uh, putting plant hormones, okay, to grow the maca, okay? And plant hormones is gonna give you a product like, like this. Okay, so now, now it's, the size is good. Uh, correct. But this how's the, product here. How's the uh, content? Well, I don't know if you, uh, I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to make a side by side comparison here, okay? Yeah. So this is this one here, the one I'm moving right now, okay? This one is the, the real one. And this is not, I, 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 don't, I don't know if you notice, one is rug, okay? So it's uh, 
is, is rough uh, in the exteriors, so is not as smooth as the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the reason why is because of the plant hormones. Okay. And uh, the other thing is uh, one product is lighter than the other. So the, uh, the one with hormones is lighter because there's air in it. So it, all it the grows, cells it grows fast, but doesn't contain the nutrients. Yeah. Correct. So again, we have the same situation as the Chinese uh, with a product that looks, resembles maca, and it grew from the actual seed, but it's no longer the same. And the benefits weren't there. So when people are going to, uh, to the store and uh, to buy a maca product, they're going to find, okay, sometimes all these products that they claim so many things about maca, but they were manufactured with this raw material, which is again useless because it doesn't really give you any benefits at all. So the only place where you can grow maca, I mean the real deal, the real McCoy, as uh, as people in Canada say, right? Mm. Uh, it's it's the maca from Junin, uh, from the from the Junin plateau, and that's it. But you know, there's still people trying to grow maca somewhere else, and they find a market for it, and basically. They're making a business, of, of course, but I mean, if you want really good benefits, these these are the products. Right. Okay. Yeah, we have a similar problem with almost every food oh, yeah. item, right? We have For sure. problems with wheat and we have problems with corn and mm -hmm. every agricultural commodity that people are trying to make things cheaper. And in the process, we'll, we're finding out that the nutrients are lacking or the yeah. benefits are lacking and so on, right? I mean, what we can uh, say is that biopiracy, okay, harms the, the consumer, but also harms the country and us trying to sell a product because then you don't know exactly what, what I mean, the consumer doesn't know exactly what's in the package. They, they trust, I mean, they trust us, right? Yes. And, but it's better to have everything uh, well explained. Well, let's uh, just say that Yutko brand has something to prove. You, we know oh, that yeah. the Yutko brand does go to the right place and gets the high quality. I certainly know it. Thanks. I've experienced it personally. 